Get out of here. That's ridiculous. Holy shit. So yeah, I'm Nick Spanos. I don't know. Anyone know me? Yeah. Oh, all right, all right. So you're going to hear the same shit over and over? No, no. But I have to show the first couple slides because people who don't know me, I want to give them a reason to listen, maybe. So yeah, wow. I never know what are on the slides. My guys put them together. So we're on this movie called Banking on Bitcoin on Netflix. It's very nice. Watch it. That's my first computer. I had to build it with a soldering iron. It was mail order. That's, that's not my first modem. That was back in 1978. That's uh, one that looks like mine was much worse. Uh, so I always tried to find w ways to make money off data or to get the machine to work and uh, be relevant. And uh, I found out, you know, I, I, I sold political data in labels. People uh, needed the labels. They didn't have a computer. I found my first source of digital scarcity, domain names. So in the beginning there, I picked up about 12,000 of them. That's funny, right? Uh, I, uh, we built uh, getaroom.com, no more hotels, livery cab, these were early Uber, early uh, Airbnb, back in the 90s. Uh, the livery cab was in, the, in 2008, no one had a smartphone. But, you know, people use it. So, we're gonna talk about permissionless innovation. The Wright brothers invented the airplane and it was permissionless. They didn't ask the mayor for permission. Because if they did ask the mayor and say, oh, I'm gonna get this flying machine to go fly. Give me a permit, probably won't happen. That's why I got those cavemen there. You got the legacy financial system. We got Bitcoin over here and other decentralized permissionless open blockchains. They don't really want us. There's the airplane. Uh, oh, then I wrote real estate software. I got into the real estate business. The stock market crashed. I was laying on my couch. I lost a lot of money. My life was incredible before. I had a big couple, a lot of cars and whatever. I grew up in the garage. My father was an auto mechanic. And I made a whole bunch of money in the real estate business. And uh, then I had to become a commercial fisherman after I sold my assets just to make ends meet. It was the end of the world. I was 23 years old and it was the end of the world. <laughs> that happens. You know, I don't know if anyone got hurt with the crash, but uh, it's never the end of the world. It's only a new beginning because I'd be out there probably dead from eating at all the restaurants. Uh-oh, people are looking at me. So I'm watching TV and I see the briefcase of Alan Greenspan is like, hey, if the reporter said if his briefcase is wider, maybe we wouldn't have had a crash. Um, so now I'm a commercial fisherman. I smell like fish. People can't see me. Well, people don't want to talk to me from two blocks away because I stink. And I'm like watching TV. I'm like, what do they mean? That guy's briefcase made me a fisherman for my big Cadillac and my $2,000 a month cell phone bill and the uh, properties I was building. He made me a fisherman. I said, he must be my owner. That guy's my owner. So I looked up uh, about the Federal Reserve. I read about the Federal Reserve and everything that had to do. And I figured out that, hey, there's no scarcity. They print up as much as they want. Before, there was a, a silver certificate and a, a gold certificate, and you got a, 20 ounce of, a one ounce of gold for $20. And one ounce of silver for $1. Then they tell oh, you don't need all that. You just need these pieces of paper and we'll make as many as we want and uh, you jump through hoops and collect them all year. It's the first ICO. The first shit coin is the Federal Reserve note. And you know what? They're like, well, why would anyone buy our shit coin? They were talking about down at Jekyll Island in 1913. Why would anyone buy our shit coin? And someone said, hey, we should invent the IRS. So people would have to collect a bunch of our shit coins and give them back to us every year. That's your upward pressure. Whatever. Holy fuck. You got over here, oh, I can't curse. This is Zimbabwe, look at that, 100 trillion, 70 cents. Paper money, Bolivar. So throughout, throughout my career, I mean, after I found out about that, I got into politics. Instead of just selling the data, 
I started running the campaigns, running the phone banks. I went, I, I went into New York City. After I found out about that, as a fisherman in two days, in two days, I don't know how it happened, I, I was involved with a presidential campaign, and within a month and a half, I was field director. That's how possessed my brain became. Over uh, someone's, uh, people and candidates who wanted to audit or talk uh, not nice about the Federal Reserve. And then finally, I found Ron Paul, and there's his quote. We've been over tax over regulated, overrun by bureaucrats, founding fathers, be ashamed of us, what we're, uh, what we're putting up with. And when I heard that, it was over. So, we supported Ron Paul, we worked for him, we were on the staff, uh, spent many years, time passed by, and, I, and a few candidates, this and that, uh, Liberty candidates, we kept losing, because in one moment, the, uh, the people out there, uh, what are they called? The mob bosses of the of politics, the, the ma mainstream media, would just smash our candidates in a few moments. It was ridiculous. So I went, I thought I lost my life. I, I thought I, 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 I burnt my life for nothing. 20 years went by and uh, I, you know, I only had one, one big win. Everything else, they're all losers. But they weren't losers because it got everyone ready to believe in competing currency. Most of the early Bitcoin is around Polars. I thought I threw my life away. And then I found the, the white paper. And I said, finally, finally I have a weapon. I have a weapon that I can't destroy on election day. I said, finally I have a weapon I can't destroy on election day. Against my owners. They can't say all the, they, and then, so time went by, I'm involved with Bitcoin, and then they started smashing Bitcoin. And I said, oh my God, it's the same guy, smashing Bitcoin, the same ones. What am I gonna do? I said, I gotta bring it into the forefront of the reality of everybody's, that we're challenging the legacy's financial system. So I went and found the biggest space down Wall Street, Went to, uh, and said, oh, I gotta rent this thing. I find, and I said, what, what the hell am I doing? I'm fucking going blind. You know, I got these surgeries. I was down 9-11, I breathed all this crap in. I got like a bunch of diseases I don't even want to remember. But most people die from them. Whoa. So, <laughs> so I thought I threw my life away. I found the Bitcoin uh, white paper and I, and I threw my life behind the whole Bitcoin white paper. The way most people here, the ones, the uh, sole survivors that are still standing, I want yourselves to give yourselves a round of applause that we're still here. They can't do shit to us. They're the irrelevant ones, you know? So I go to open the Bitcoin center and I say, I can't do it. I said, I don't think I could do it. And uh, then I remember my father, when he gave me this bicycle, Gave me this busted up bicycle, was five, uh, five years old, no tra you know, with training wheels. Everyone outside didn't have training wheels. And uh, I mean, they had training wheels also, and they had fancy bicycles, and I'm riding uh, this bicycle all happy. And everyone's like, hey, your bicycle sucks, because he built it with his hands. He was a mechanic. Uh, we didn't have much money growing up. And uh, he was a mechanic, and he built it with his own hands, all different parts. And they were laughing at my bicycle, the way they laughed at Bitcoin. They were laughing at my bicycle. So I put it in the back of the house, in the back of the uh, hallway, and that was it. My father never saw him. Only he went to work at five in the morning, came back at 11 at night, 10, 11 at night. But on Sundays, I'd see him when he woke up at two o'clock. He said, why don't you ride the bicycle? I said, I don't like the training wheels, I said to him real quick to get away from the conversation. He said, oh good, I'm gonna take them off. So he takes the training wheels off, he goes, let's ride them. And then uh, the kids were outside with the training wheels, riding around with their fancy bicycles, and I said, uh, but they're, Mekata uh, and they're pressing me. Mekata Piezun in Greek. He goes, they're pressing you? Legacy financial systems are pressing us? People that don't believe in Bitcoin or digital scarcities are pressing us? He says to me, maybe they're pressing you because you're so oppressible. He goes, there's millions of them out there. Forget about what they say, forget everything. He goes, you have to learn something new. There's a time to learn something new and now's the time. 
He goes, you can never, if you're doing good, you, your strength will, will always grow, always. When you know you're doing good, no one can stop you. Your strength will be renewed. I said, how do I do this with the bicycle? How do I do this with the Bitcoin? He said, always look where you want to go, my father said. I said, okay, always look where I want to go. Thinking to myself, so what if someone gets in front of me? Then he said, what if someone, uh, only, he, what they said, even the whole world will step aside once you know where you're going. After you know where you're going, in Bitcoin or blockchain, permissionless open blockchain, decentralized blockchain, the whole world will step aside for each and one of you, every one of you. I said, what if I fail, Dad? What if I fall? He goes, everyone falls. You gotta get back up. Every time when you fall and you're on your back, you see the sky, you can get right back up. I said, listen, I need more time. I need more time. Dad, can we do this later? Can we learn how to ride the bicycle later? Can't we change the world later? I need more time. And I said, he said, everyone gets the same amount of time. Leonardo da Vinci, Alexander the Great, even the homeless person. Everyone gets the same time. It's what you do within the time, what you do per minute. You have to take that time and steal from time your life. Whoa. So I said, oh, should I open? So I'm thinking these thoughts to open the center, the Bitcoin center, 100 feet from the New York Stock Exchange. On the ground floor, I found the space. And it was tearing me up. I go, holy shit, I'm gonna spend millions of dollars here that I don't have. I don't see how I can do it. I said, I was, you know, I had all these eye surgeries that year and, and even into now. I said, I can't see anything. I'm all smashed up. What am I gonna do? I said, send me a sign. I mean, this is gonna sound crazy, but I said, just get to send me a sign. So it was real windy, I ran outside. I was gonna go sign the lease. It was so windy, I went into this doorway and there was a pack of business cards on the doorknob. And it was just balanced on the doorknob. It was like ridiculous. I said, what the hell is that? And I landed there, I go, is that the sign? I go, nah, I don't think. I started walking down the block, two blocks later, and I saw a bicycle shop. I go, is that a sign? And then I said, oh, that can't be a sign. That's been there for years. And then I said, holy shit, I ran back. I looked at the cards, and it was bicycle uh, playing cards. Red bicycle. I go, holy shit. And then I went and did it. I don't know. And then I remembered. <laughs> he also said, Thirio de Nines and Thirio de Tros. A beast you will never become. Unless you consume beasts, unless you eat beasts, you will never become a beast yourself. The legacy financial system is a beast. Inflationary uh, currency is a beast. Fiat currency is a beast. These governments are printing, making laws. They think they, they get into office, they think it's time to make laws. And they make stacks of laws, they think they're doing something, oppressing us. I'm angry. Bitcoin's a bubble, they're the bubble. Bitcoin's a pin. I said that first, but people can use it, I don't care. That's my brother and I. We open up. I didn't know anything. We had lawyers at the door because I figured I'd get arrested the first day. I'm standing there shaking. We're all in there like, they're coming. Where's Alex? Alex. Palenzas. Huh? I thought they were coming. I mean, they came, but they couldn't do anything. We weren't doing anything. I, we, I paid for the rent. I paid for the booze. People were trading, I didn't take a commission. It had nothing to do with money. I know that I'm fucking locked in a cage my whole life here by my oppressors and all I want 
is one day after I bust my ass, every day, I don't care if it's the last day, I don't care if I have to live on a park bench, I want to run free for once in my life. Before I die in this cage. Motherfuckers. Whatever. Yeah, we make ATMs. Voting machines, no politician wants it. Bitcoin's always been dead there, right? Dies every time. That's me doing some kung fu. With the afro, that's me with the afro. I, uh, we have a project called zap.org. We trigger financial uh, smart contracts with uh, three, uh, data from the three-dimensional world. Look it up if you want. We tokenize whatever we can get our hands on. It's the rise of the initial oracle offering, I believe. Tokenizing data. Humanitarian relief. Do that. We do a bunch of stuff. I'm just looking at the clock and I don't have any time left, so I'm uh, clicking through real fi fast. So, decentralization. I think uh, we have all the makings of a decentralized world where each and every one of us can have the ability to create what we want, do what we want, as long as we're not harming others, because after we do what we want, we usually help others. Government is gonna help us. We're government, people's government. If we don't free ourselves, you know, Chinese have this the social scoring now. That same company is in New York City. Believe it or not, pitching NYPD right now. Yesterday. That same company. Yeah. What are you gonna do about it? Huh? You got these big companies show up, oh, we're blockchain, right? And we feel, oh, we're legitimized now. We're legitimized? We've always been legitimate. They're the crooks, blockchain. Permissioned, closed, fucking centralized blockchain, they're calling it blockchain. And we're like, oh yeah, listen, what I was doing was good. IBM's doing it, Microsoft is doing it, Google's gonna do it, Facebook's gonna do it. I'm normal. That's bullshit. We were normal at the beginning and pure at the beginning. And we're gonna stay that way. My father said, if you're soap, no matter how many dirty people touch you, you're still clean all the way through. They're trying to, they know their time has come and they're trying to uh, make sure that they don't fall into the pit of, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Hamdan. Where are you? They want to make sure that they're still relevant. So they grab the word blockchain. They want, oh, we can raise money with blockchain. We got to piss on those people. They're illegitimate. If we don't free ourselves with the open, permissionless, decentralized blockchain, they're gonna imprison and enslave us with the closed, permissioned, centralized blockchain. Do you hear me? Yeah. I hope so.